So a very striking headline in the sports pages of Wednesday's Irish Examiner. Hurling Super League leaving the rest behind, says Kerry boss Spinton O'Connor. And to tell us more about this story, delighted to say that the current Kerry manager and the former Waterford selector is on the line now. And Finton, why do you feel that there's a Super League in hurling? Oh, I suppose, look, it's probably bad timing on my behalf. <laughs> a little bit sensational, I suppose. Um, with what was going on in the soccer, maybe we were talking about it, and I just kind of mentioned that, maybe. Look, I just feel that sometimes the drama ton of teams are maybe left behind. Um, I know there's a lot of talk about trying to help Melbourne counties, and um, I know there's great work being done in, in the likes of Westfield and Carlow and ourselves and Kerry, and I know Antrim are up playing um, in the Leinster Championship this year, and I suppose we're we're very envious of that fact down in, down in Kerry. But um, yeah, look, I, I I just think that sometimes more can be done um, for counties like Kerry and that in, in, to give them more exposure to the to the likes of the Waterford and the Tipperary's and the Cork and Kilkenny's and Galway's, and and that's I suppose um, that's kind of what I was getting at, you know. Yeah, can you explain to the listeners, Finton, what changes have been made to the Joe McDonough competition this year? Well, I suppose, look, um, the Joe McDonough, first of all, f- and foremost, um, from my, my experience of it, it's a very good competition, and the last number of years, it's it's been run either with five teams or six teams, so every team in it would have been played on a round robin, a league basis, and then it is going to, um, the top two teams of the league will qualify for the Joe McDonough final, and and in previous years, I suppose pre-COVID years, those two teams had also played a kind of All-Ireland preliminary quarter final. Now look, um, obviously, and I said this at the time, um, there's no sour grapes on, on anyone's behalf. We know the COVID restrictions and, and the time limit on, on games and allowing club players to get back as well. And no one wants to impinge on, on, on that either. But um, I suppose the, the the Lee McCarthy Harley Championship is finished in August and this year's Joe McDonough is finished um, the same day as the Leinster final on the, on the 7th of July. So that's probably um, a little bit disappointing from, from the point of view of the Joe McDonough players are probably getting maybe seven weeks of a championship whereas um, I suppose the teams that ultimately get to Lee McCarthy will, will probably have about um, 12 weeks, I think, uh, looking at the whole season now, not the, the championship, you know. And like last December, Finton, the Joe McDonough final between Antrim and Kerry acted as a curtain raiser to the All Ireland Senior final between Limerick and Waterford. This time around, it'll be played before the Leinster final in mid July. What was your reaction to that? Yeah, look, I suppose, first of all, we were delighted to be part of the All Ireland final Sunday um, last year. I know it probably ended very disappointingly for us. No difference than, than, I suppose, the lads in Waterford. It's lovely to be part of that day, and I suppose the, the teams in Tier 2 probably have never experienced that before. So even when the when the draw was made and, and the Joe McDonough, when it came out that the Joe McDonough final will be played before the All-Ireland final last year, it was a massive carrot for all the teams in Joe McDonough to be part of that. What is a hugely special day, I suppose, for every person that's involved in hurling all throughout the country. They all look at the All-Ireland hurling final day the build up to it and the lead into it and it was really special for the for the Kerry hurlers and I suppose the, the Antrim hurlers last year and I suppose that would have been I thought was a really good idea by Crow Park and, and the GA to, to really encourage players at I suppose tier two level to maybe drive on it and be part of something like that. And, and look it was really special for our lads, even though it was disappointing in the end, it was really special for them to be up there with Limerick and Waterford last year and um I suppose I would have loved that opportunity again for, for all the players in the Joe McDonough, not just the Kerry players, but for all the players. And um, I know, look, I know the fixtures calendar is, is very complex. And uh, as I said at the time when I was interviewed a couple of days ago, I didn't mean it to come across as sour grapes or whatever, but I suppose I'm only trying to get what's best for the lads in Kerry. And, and I suppose, known from experience last year, what's best for, for a, a hurler in a Tier 2 county is to to be afforded that opportunity and, and I'd love that to be the case again and look hopefully the GA might revisit in normal times and it might be something that comes um, becomes a regular thing down the line that the Joe McDonough is a curtain raiser for the All-Ireland final and look I know the times we're living in now we can't be too critical of anyone in, in the position they're in you know? and this will be your fifth year in, in charge of Kerry Finton like from your experience over that time what else do you think can be done for Joe McDonough counties like Kerry as I said to you, look, I think the more they're exposed to, to top-level games, the better. I know 
um, like I know some, sometimes um, the, the Munster Senior Hurling League provided us with a great opportunity to play the likes of Tate like Cork and Waterford in kind of competitive or somewhat competitive games or they were more meaningful than challenge games and, and that was a huge um, like the lad, the hurlers in Kerry want to play against the Tips and the Waterfords and they'd love to play against Kilkenny and, and Galway now that said we know we have to try and get up to divisions to, to, to do that and I suppose we were disappointed the last couple of years to lose in the, in the, um, in the Division 2 final that would have maybe got, got us up into the higher higher levels but even if you look at Carlo and 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 their experience playing in Leinster last year, um, playing in, in Division One, it's it's probably too short for them to to maybe gain any like yeah, definitely they've improved and, and they'll sit, they'll be the first to say it and they improve from the experience of playing against them teams. But maybe playing against them teams for longer, you'd improve more. And I suppose that's what, that's what we'd be looking to do. And look, I, as I said, I'm not saying it's easy and it's very easy for me to have my Kerry glasses on and just look at it from Kerry's point of view. Um, and I know the number of games that, that teams are playing is, is, is hard to get the balance right, but I do think that maybe they should look at trying to trying to get the teams that are, are trying to make a step up and giving them exposure at, at at the level. And even this year, reduce the amount of games into Joe McDonough to, to two, really, uh, and a final um, goes against, I suppose, the idea of, of exposing the, the teams in our division and teams in our competition to higher level games where where the pressure is at its greatest at the right time of year. Yeah, would you like to see Kerry back up in the Munster Championship, Fintan, when we return to some sort of normality in 2022? Um, yeah, look, I suppose we're, we're, there's no point in being in um, being uh, foolish about it either. Like, we're trying our best to, to improve. We're trying our best to compete at the highest level. And from Beatles last year in all the games, three, four games that we played, Division 2 final, Joe McDonough final, Joe McDonough round robin. So Antrim deserves to be at the next level. I don't know, do we deserve to be at that next level? We'd like to, I suppose, be there on merit. Um, maybe down the road, like we're playing division, we're playing in the Munster A under 20. We played minor A last year. Um, Kerry against Tip. We played Cork in the under 20 A and Cork has gone on to the other semi-final in that competition. And look, we, we weren't, we weren't, um, really competitive with Cork but we felt we gave a good account of ourselves at that level last year and look we're trying to try to, to be more competitive uh, and I know we wouldn't be viewed as, as being able to compete with, with any of the top five teams in Munster but maybe um, as I said exposure at that level would make us more competitive um, but look we're realistic too and it's not this isn't me going off on a rant and I, I Every time you read a, a newspaper headline, I suppose, as a manager or player or that, you're always afraid, oh, maybe I came across as being a bit foolish there. Uh, and, and reading it yesterday, I was like, oh, everyone was giving out about me or slagging me off about what are you on about Super League in Harland. Uh, and I, I didn't mean it for to be like that, but I, I definitely, um, I did say it and I, I did kind of, I do think that sometimes the likes of Kerry and teams that do just need more help and, and and more help all throughout, like across the board. And, and um, look, I, I do think they're making great strides, and, and hopefully they'll get there on their own in the next couple of years. You know. Yeah, well, I think anyone listening to this this evening, Fincham, will know that your heart is in the right place, and that you're you're very passionate about Kerry hurling. Just looking ahead now to 2021, and uh, what targets have you set for the year ahead? Oh well, look, I suppose the same target we probably set every year to try and try and improve as much as we can, and do things as best we can. And, and hopefully that can take us maybe one better than last year. But the lads are, um, in Kerry and myself um, and all the, the backroom team know that just because you're in the final last year gives you no divine right. I'm sure the lads in the same way just as during the all the final last year doesn't mean that it'll make it any easier on them on the this year coming. And they're, I suppose they're like us back to square one and, and back down the bottom of the ladder trying to get back to where they were last year and go one rung higher or one step further. And, and look, we're no different in Kerry. We've we've been very disappointed in the last number of years falling at maybe the final hurdle, but that doesn't mean we'll get that even the opportunity to get to that final stage this year. And and look, that that I suppose everyone's ultimate aim at the start of the year to try and try and win win something. But as as I said, there's no guarantees. But we have as a group tried to try to say that we'll we'll give it everything to improve and, and um, do things as best and and hopefully that'll that'll take us to 
to where we want to be. And Finson, I can't leave you go without asking you about Waterford's prospects for the year ahead. Um, what do you think Liam Cahill will be looking to get out of the five rounds in Division 1A, starting off at Cork on the 9th of May? Ah, yeah, well, look, I suppose I, I, not want to, I, like, I wouldn't like to even talk for, talk for Liam, but um, I think, in fairness to them, they had a, a very good um, year last year. Um, I think the, the younger lads um, really don't stepped up to the mark. I suppose he'll be trying to ultimately find another few of them, maybe. Um, I know Shane Bennett's back in with the with the panel, and I think he'll he'll give them something. Um, I suppose they'll be trying to offset the, the, the lot of maybe suffering from Tyg and 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 Paddy there out with with long term injuries, and um, that that's probably ultimately what they'll be looking at during the league if they can find someone that can that can fill their massive shoes. Um, <laughs> that'll be a, a very successful league campaign, I, I'd imagine for them. Um, and look, I think. Teams in Division One will treat the league maybe differently than than ourselves in Division Two. We'll be looking to try and get out of Division Two, whereas maybe the teams in Division One will be looking at it nearly completely as a as a I suppose a, a testing board for for what they have in their panel. And I know they've increased the number of substitutes in in the league as well, so that that might make it a little bit easier for for everyone in the league. And as you know, tomorrow I suppose different management will will approach the league differently. Some of them will think, oh, we'd like to go and win the league from a confidence point of view. And others will feel that maybe unearthing a few players or getting a bit of game time. And I think the fact that there hasn't been challenge matches, the fact that teams are probably going into the league maybe colder than ever before, it'll probably mean that a lot of the league games are, are played at a little bit less of a hectic pace than they have been previously. So um, I think players and, and fans are so happy to get back out and see see games and be part of games that I think everyone will be understanding of it and, and they won't be expecting a huge amount early doors anyway you know and you mentioned Shane Bennett there Fintan the player you know so well from Blackwater in Lismore where you teach and also from your time as, as Waterford selector what impact will he make this season do you reckon ah yeah well look I suppose he, he's been out of it for a while he, he offered a huge amount to us when we were in Waterford um, myself and Derek and Dan there a few years ago so um, as you said we It'd be no surprise. He's a he's a very talented young man, and and um, hopefully he can hit the ground running. And and look, that's I suppose going with the caveat of not putting pressure on him, um, not not having huge expectations for him to do do just what I said and hit the ground running. It'll be obviously he's been out of it for a while, and it'll take him a while to kind of adapt and get back into it. But I know, look, knowing Shane from school and, and from having been involved with him for from. A Waterford perspective, he'll be he he'll understand what what he has to do to get back up to speed. And, and look, the fact that I suppose Stephen and Kieran have been there the last number of years, Shane was probably envious enough of them, especially last year preparing for an All Ireland final was probably hard on Shane. So I'm sure he'll have he'll have a the bit between his teeth, and um, hopefully he'll he'll produce um, what he can produce. Well, Finton O'Connor, Kerry Hurland boss and former Waterford selector, thanks so much for your time today. And all the best for 2021. No bother. Thanks for having me, Tomas. Thanks a minute.